UNO. I'm no expert coming at you from the studio, and we're here to talk about last night's game three between the LA Lakers and the Phoenix Suns. Now, the LA Lakers took charge of the series up 2-1. They're halfway there to completing the victory, and they looked really good. They're starting to gel, and they're firing on, I want to say now, almost all cylinders. Um, okay, it looks like Andre Drummond, the other AD, is starting to find his role, fall into place, and be comfortable with this squad. He didn't really have a lot of time to gel with LeBron and AD and see what that kind of formidable, powerful front court could be like. And now we're starting to see. We saw what he did in game two. He was a huge catalyst for that victory, scoring scoring points, getting rebounds. He did, a, he did a lot of the same again in last night's game, but he didn't score quite on the same level. His role wasn't as large in game three as it was in game two, but he pretty much picked up where he left off. He's looking strong, he's looking comfortable, and he's looking like he's starting to feel like he fits in and he belongs with that squad. So I'm starting to see why that was a good pickup. Well, had a doubts when in his first game he hurt his toe, and he just wasn't gelling at the end of the season with the guys. But now, when it really counts in the playoffs, he looks good. He looks like he belongs, and he looks like he's going to be effective. He's got girthy game. Speaking of the other... Anthony Davis, now he looked great in game two and in game three. I mean, he's looking phenomenal. He had a little scare on that chase down block against Booker where it looked like he hyperextended his knee, but he's all good. He also got hit with the 6-12 to 12 elbow by DeAndre Ayton early in the game, but he's all right. He's showing more toughness. He's getting up off the ground. He's not hurt. That's all we care about. He's effective, and he's as good as a player as there is in the NBA when he's on. And the thing I liked about his game last night is he didn't need 20-something uh, free throws to get his points. He, he had a good amount of free throws, but his scoring was more from the field and less from the line, which I like better in any player. Sure, if you earn the shot, if you're getting fouled, if you're being aggressive and they're sending you to the line, you're going to take the points any way you can get them. But me personally, as a fan, I prefer to see the points from the field and not from the free throw line, and Anthony Davis did just that. He looked really good. He was attacking the hoop on offense. He was he was getting it on defense, and he looks like he's ready. And it was cute how he had his daughter at the podium with him for the postgame um, press conference. That was kind of a nice touch. A la Steph Curry. LeBron James, what do you need to say about I mean, I don't see any problems with the high ankle sprain at this point. I mean, and if there is a problem, last couple games, he hasn't been showing it. Um, he's just too good. He's just too strong. He's just got too many... His basketball knowledge, he's just, he's up there, man. He, his his game, it was funny how Crowder uh, thought he, he was good. The little sequence they had back and forth where, where Crowder thought he was like the LeBron stopper or some shit, and LeBron just had to let him know, man, there's no stopping this. There's no stopping the king. Still, man, 36 years old, 17th season, and he's just sunning the Suns. He's, he's, he's just impressive to watch. He's just coming in there and he's flexing on him because he deserves to and the team is behind him he's got that he's a good team leader you can see he's got the chemistry gelling he's leading by example and he's not trying to i mean he takes over he he didn't have as many points as it seemed like he had um you know it, it just seemed like he scores whenever he wants to and it's pretty much just get out of his way or just get dunked on or just highlight reeled upon LeBron James is doing his thing, and if LeBron and AD are playing like this, and the cast and characters around them, drumming, and let's not talk about shrewd boy, Dennis Schroeder, the shredder, this man cuts and dices through the lane to the hoop, and he just gets in there and under there, and he puts his shots up over these taller dudes. When Schroeder is on, he is impressive. Um, you know, he's, he's doing what he came to do now, and he looked good, and... Yeah, Schroeder the Shredder, Shrewd Boy. If he keeps up playing like he has been in these last couple games and the other guys start picking it up, it's going to be dangerous. KCP started to get out of a slump. You know, he had that nice steal for the layup. You know, nice rebound for a putback. You know, he looked like he was starting to get energized, not trying to just shoot from the outside. You know what they always say? If your outside shot's not falling, take it to the hoop. And that's what he did. He took a couple shots to the hoop. He was starting to get activated. And then he hurt. He got hurt. Some kind of thigh contusion. I hope it's not serious. That gave Wesley, Mas Wesley Matthews the opportunity to come in and hit some key shots to get himself going. You see what I'm saying? And even though Kyle Kuzma has been struggling from the scoring aspect, he has been putting in work on the on the rebounding aspect of the game. He had 10 rebounds last night. 
he did come up with eight points and a few assists. But Kuzma, even though he gets a lot of criticism for not looking good on the scoring end, he does hustle on defense. He does move his feet. He does go for blocks. He does tip the ball. He does get rebounds. So he's putting in a lot of hustle plays that don't necessarily show up on the stat line. The adjustments by Frank Vogel, you know, putting in uh, Gasol over Trez, uh, you know, we all like THT as a young talent, but maybe he needs a little less time and give those other guys some more time. That's what we're seeing. And I'm sure Trez throughout the course of these playoffs will get more playoff time. Vogel will readjust according to who we're playing. Lakers defense is looking good as usual. They held Devin Booker to 19 points, uh, 19 points for the game and a, and a few of those points came in the fourth quarter and pretty much garbage time from the free throw line he was so frustrated he did that punk ass shove i mean he took both of his hands and Schroeder was uh shredding toward the hoop and uh it was pretty much a, like a non-consequential play i mean the game was pretty much in, in the refrigerator and booker just grabs him by the hips with both hands and just shoves him while he's in the midair and that's a punk ass play not a good basketball play it, it just shows you we know you're frustrated you want to win but just that's not the way to do it, Devin Booker. But he's still a phenomenal player. But he was held to simply 19 points last night. And uh, Chris Paul is obviously not 100%. Um, who is at this stage of the of the season, uh, especially at the age that he's at? Uh, his shoulder is obviously still bothering him. He's not as effective as he wants to be. But, oh, well, that's part of the game. And I'm not saying that the Suns would have a chance uh, to win the series. If he was 100% healthy, sure, they would have a chance. Is their chance diminished now? Possibly. But that has given uh, Cameron Payne a chance to step up and shine. He looked really good in the second game, and he, he was pretty decent last night, too, scoring a lot of points for the Suns, and he's showing a lot of effort and a lot of hustle. And Cameron Major Payne is ready and coming to play and ready to step in and fill the role for a somewhat injured Chris Paul, who's not 100%. Which brings us to the Suns' ultimate weapon, their best weapon, their strongest weapon, DeAndre Ayton, uh, this guy is shooting at a very high percentage. He gets in there. He, he kind of just gets what he wants when he's inside. He's their most effective player. And luckily, we have strong bigs like Anthony Davis, like Andre Drummond, and, uh, you know, of course, LeBron James and everyone else to throw at him because that dude is a problem. And uh, they're just going to have to keep feeding him to have a chance. I know we, the Lakers were largely ahead by margins of like 16, 13, 21, and the Suns kept making little mini runs trying to cut it back, but we never let them get a chance. And uh, game four on Sunday, the Lakers have an opportunity to just pretty much put a stranglehold on the Suns. And uh, the Lakers just got to beat them and beat them badly like they did last night. Even worse if they can. Uh, don't give them any hope. I know it's a seven-game series potentially, but if we go up 3-1, the Lakers go up 3-1, that's going to spell big, big trouble for the Suns going back to Phoenix. I'm no expert. I just call it how I see it, and I'll see you guys on the next one. You will know.